Welcome to Gathering Faults. Today we're going to do a compound quadrilaterals um, variation tessellation. Uh, I'm going to start with a compound closed square in the center, go out to rectangles on the sides, and open squares on the corners. So I'm starting with a 40-fold grid. Uh, go ahead and check out uh, my other video on that if you want to learn about that method. Um, but what we're going to do right now is start with the central uh, closed square. So I'm going to find the center of the paper in both directions and make a closed square twist. So what that means is so I'm going to take the four grid lines that run into the center and I'm going to rotate them around. I'm choosing to spin up um, because that's my usual preference but um, if you do it the other way you'll just have a mirrored image final tessellation. So I'm going around making sure that everything is um, arranged nicely, that there's no crinkles anywhere, and then I will push to flatten and bring in the bone folder to finish it off. Um, next, I'm going to uh, look at where I want to place the next um, items uh, so that I can do all of the inner um, twists first and then do the outer twists later. This is going to be a mirrored-ish um, symmetry, not exactly, but the twist directions for each one is going to alternate in a checkerboard pattern. So I'm going to do a little bit of pre-creasing, and I want to have, um, call it two spaces empty between each, so space empty would mean my next outer crease is going to go here, inner crease is going to go in here. So I know that this is one of my inner creases. I'm going to flip it back over and I'm doing a hybrid open close square twist here, extending to the outside. And I do have a video specifically on this twist. And by the way, this is the first time that I have um, done this particular tessellation. So you are along for the ride in figuring it out. Um, and I'm gonna do the same thing in this direction. Leaving two. The outer one will be here. And the inner one will be here. So there's my crease. And I'm just going to let that stay as is for now, as a double crease, squash that inner square, and 
then, or half square rather. Make sure everything's nice and flat. Okay. So for this outer one, I'm going to be doing an open square twist, open back square twist. carry on and this time I'm just going to count um, how many grid spacings there should be between this corner and this corner uh, which should be the same as this corner to this corner so use the same measurement so two four six eight nine two four six eight ten Okay, so I do need the reference points. And this one is open. Okay, so you know how I was saying that this one is only nine away, whereas this one is ten? This one is 10. We're just gonna roll with it, make the other one also nine away, uh, which means it has one spacing um, left visible on the other side. So I'm gonna measure that. As I was saying earlier, this is the first time that I'm doing this particular tessellation. So, you know, snafus to be expected. But welcome to the learning process. <laughs> we are adding another interesting piece of, I guess, not quite symmetry to our design another layer of complexity as it were but yes okay, so that's the reference and taking it to the outside
And we've got our other open back squares on the corners. So if you're familiar with my um, square knot weave tessellation, you this pattern will look very familiar. Um, so if this crease was all the way in to here, um, like if it was physically in here, move everything in, then you would be looking at the um, square knots weave, like if these bars were two units wide. It's exactly the same thing. But what I'm going to do next is do compound twists around all of these twists. And at first I didn't think it was possible to do a compound twist around this um, hybrid uh, open closed square twist. But I tested it and it worked, so we're going to do it. So starting with the central twist, I take two spacings around each one. And just like any other twist, build it out one bit at a time. So this closed uh, square uh, compound twist goes together just like that. And the thing with twists is, um, like for example, if you have a square like this, you can arrange your pleats that you're doing the twist any distance out and still do a twist. Um, I think it was uh, Miguel Gagnon, uh, his Tower of Hanoi unit takes advantage of this and just does twist and bigger, twist and bigger, twist. Um, so this is a very general technique that you can apply to any of your twists. And next I'm going to do this one on the side and likewise I'm just doing two spacings around each. I'm, I'm somewhat certain that this twist is theoretically impossible but you can actually do it so here we are. Uh, you can do a lot of things by um, just making the paper do it that you wouldn't necessarily be able to get a computer to do. And next up, I'm going to do this one. And simultaneously, this, getting this corner one ready to go. So I'm gonna get these in order. And get this 
corner and then flatten both. So this open compound square twist that I'm doing right now was the first of, well, actually no, I did, I came up with the hexagon first, but um, twist is very generalizable. Um, once I figured out how to do it on a hexagon, got the square next, and very quickly after that, um, the triangle and the rhombus and the right triangle. Um, so you can really use this method on just about anything. Next up, this guy over here. I'm getting this one ready as well. It does take a lot of different things lining up together all at the same time, but um, one of the nice things about this kind of twist is you can just go over it and over it and over it and like adjust small bits a little bit at a time. So it's not like you have eight folds. I mean, you do have eight folds that you're doing, but you do four of them first and four of them later. And um, you can really just focus on one or two of them at a time and get it done. And now you can start to see the uh, symmetry bit that I messed up in the beginning. Uh, so I've got two spacings here, uh, which pairs nicely with these two spacings on the edge. Um, if only I would have done these a little further out, uh, that would have done the same thing. But, hey, I miscounted. But it's okay. And um, I didn't feel like having extra creases on the paper, so I rolled with it change the design a bit, and you can do it too. Like, I've been folding tessellations for a long time. If I mess up the counting, it's okay if you mess up the counting. And really, is it messing up the counting? Or is it designing a different variation than you thought you were starting with? Up to you. Also one trick with the rectangles, uh, you know how I said they were mathematically impossible? Um, they become closer to mathematically possible the larger they are. So for example, the interior, the hybrid twist, um, you can't just squash down as a rectangle and expect it to behave nicely. But this outer one that's a lot bigger, you actually can. 
and you have a lot more leeway because um, the distances are larger, it's closer in proportion to a square, um, which is what would be uh, mathematically the right thing to do. <laughs> um, but hey, if the paper allows it, go for it. No need to stick with what math says can be done. <laughs> And there you have it, the completed tessellation. So you've got your closed compound square twist in the middle and your open compound square twists on the corners with um, the hybrid open closed square twist compounded in the sides to get from one to the other. Enjoy! and. Come on back for the next video.